Good morning. If you're like us, breakfast is really important, but your mornings are usually really crazy. I know we have two kids that we're generally trying to get up out of bed and ready for school. And so planning makes our morning go that much more smoothly. Breakfast is one of those things that we generally can um, make quickly, but it's also nice to make things up ahead of time. And what I'm going to show you today is just like a series of kind of egg frittatas. And frittata is basically a crustless quiche. There's different flavor combinations to keep it interesting and um, to satisfy the different taste in your house. And what I did when we first started doing low carb high fat, I would make these up on Sunday evening and make different flavors. Mm -hmm. And then my husband would have them um, for work. And so I'd make them, cut them into squares, and then he could just grab one, warm it up in the microwave, and oftentimes he would eat it, or he would get in the car on the way to work. So let's start. What I've done is I've um, started with eggs, and I've done a lot since we're gonna be making several different uh, flavors, in fact, four different flavors of uh, frittata or crustless quiche. And this is basically, for every eight eggs, you want to use a third of a cup of heavy cream. Now remember, heavy cream has a higher milk fat than heavy whipping cream. If you can't find heavy cream, just use heavy whipping cream. But this is eight, uh, the ratio here is eight eggs, one third cup of cream, heavy cream, um, one half teaspoon of salt, and some pepper. Now, depending on what I'm putting in here, I might put different spices, uh, dry mustard, things like that. But for now, I've just kept it really basic with salt, pepper, eggs, and cream. Okay, and I've got my containers, and you can use different size containers. I'm doing, uh, I'll explain as I go why I'm using the size I am, but you want to spray it with coconut oil or use some kind of fat. Um, you could use bacon fat, you could use olive oil, butter, ghee. Uh, I'm using the coconut oil spray because it's easy. This, I get this at Trader Joe's. I think it's $1.99. I can spray it and I'm done. Uh, but you can use any of fat that you prefer. So I've sprayed these and you do want to do that. The first flavor I'm going to make is one that my husband really, really likes. It's a Spanish or Mexican flavor, I guess you would say, because it has chorizo. So what I've done is I've taken my cast iron skillet and I've got the oven preheated to 350 because this will go into the oven. Um, but I've, I've, in my cast iron skillet, I've ground chorizo and this is the Supremo brand. And I did the entire package, which I think is 16 ounces. And there are four servings in a package and you can see this is quite a bit of chorizo. Um, it's fairly spicy. To it, I've added some onion um, but fairly well chopped and some bell pepper, some green bell pepper, and I've just browned it. If I wasn't going to make different flavors, I could just put my cheeses in here and the egg, bake it in the skillet, and it really is pretty, especially if you're taking it to a brunch or you're serving it to people having company. Um, so I would do that normally and not mess up more pans, but because I'm going to make a spicier version and a milder version, I am going to put it in glass baking dishes. The other thing that you want to think about with the chorizo is what you serve with it. And you can serve sour cream, fresh gua um, guacamole or avocado if you don't have time to make the whole guacamole, but avocado, salsa, uh, chopped, fresh chopped cilantro. You can really make a nice brunch dish out of this. So let's take a little bit of this and I'll make the spicy version first. And I'm just going to put a nice little kind of layer of the meat and the dish. And this is a cheese I found at Trader Joe's. It's a smoked chili cheese. It is pretty spicy. It is not something I think that, that my, our kids would enjoy because it's pretty spicy. And that chorizo is already pretty spicy too. So I've um, shredded that up and I'm probably not gonna use all of that. And because he likes things spicier than we do, I'm gonna add some jalapenos to it. You can use fresh jalapenos. I just keep this jar of jalapenos in the um, fridge and I'm just gonna sprinkle those in too. And like I said, the oven is preheated at 350 and this will bake, the length of time that it takes to bake is going to vary depending on your oven and depending on the size of the dish that you're making. And that's probably enough jalapenos, he can add more. I'm afraid this may be too spicy even for him. Now I'm just taking the fork and 
I'm spreading these out a little bit. And I'm also, if you can notice, I'm taking my fork and just kind of pressing down into it to create these little pockets because I'm going to pour the egg over this and I really want it to mix well. So I'm not stirring it. I'm just kind of poking it. <laughs> okay. Let's pour the egg mixture over. And, and it smells so good. I can't tell you how many times I wish that you could smell or taste what we're making. Okay. And that's it. So that one is done. We'll put that one in the oven and then I'll make a less spicy version that the children and I will actually eat. Okay. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. <laughs> For the next one, I'm going to continue using the chorizo. I'll just use the rest of it in here. Um, I really want to use this cast iron skillet because. Um, all those wonderful flavors are in there. You know, I love the pot liquor. And all those great flavors are in there. Okay, so, clean that out. Now, like I said, this is pretty spicy on its own. So, instead of using any of the spicy cheese, I'm going to use just a plain cheddar cheese. And this is a shredded, this is a Cabot English cheddar. And it's one of our favorites. You can use whatever. You could use a Mexican cheddar. If you wanted to, um, whatever works. My kids say cheddar makes it better. Uh, just like I say butter makes it better. But I'm putting cheese over that. Another thing that you can do to make it more mild and to increase your fat ratios. Now, fat ratios are not a problem with the chorizo because it's pretty fatty. But you can take cream cheese. And this is Trader Joe's cream cheese. Remember, I like to use the cream cheeses that just have one gram of carb. The Philly original um, has been redone and there are more carbs per serving than there used to be. I don't know why, but there are two grams uh, per serving. I think it's a two ounce serving. And I prefer to buy the brands that have one carb per serving. So I'm just taking the, this cream cheese and just kind of putting it, you can see, in small bits. The cream cheese will help to um, make the flavor less hot, a little more mild. And I'm going to take the fork and kind of poke that around like I did before. You can put different things in here. Remember, I've got chorizo, bell pepper, onion. And I'm just going to mix it a little bit. I'm mixing a little more than just poking. And then when I put the egg over it, I'll do the same thing. I just want to get in there really well. The cream cheese, you don't have to worry about it being in clumps because it will melt, um, especially into the egg part. And it'll just be a nice little... Um, way to make it not quite so spicy. I'm not a spicy food eater. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's pour the eggs over it. And the oven is pretty heated. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to press it down. And we're not egg fans. Let me tell you, one of the reasons I started doing this is my husband really doesn't care very much for eggs. And so I'm trying to hide the egg <laughs> with the other flavors. And this actually works. All right, there's that one done. So we've got two of those um, blends done. Now let's do one of my favorites. Um, this is country ham. I'm actually gonna use country ham and broccoli and um, onion. So what I did is I took my cast iron skillet and again, I could just add things into this and bake it all together. Um, and in fact, why don't I do that? I'm gonna change up on myself and I'll show you how pretty that is. So this is, I just, all I did was take um, onion, a little onion and bacon fat. You know, save my bacon fat whenever we bake our bacon in the oven. So I did some, I put the bacon grease in there and some onion, I maybe used a third of a cup of onion, not a lot, and then probably half to three quarters of a cup of broccoli. Now, if you'll notice, I chopped the broccoli fairly fine. You want it to be in small bites because when somebody bites into this frittata, you don't want a big mouthful of broccoli, or at least I don't. So it's all relatively finely chopped, and I just cooked it around till it's tender. It's not mushy, 
but it is tender and it just has that really nice um, bright green color that lets me know it's done. A few places it got a little browned and that'll give it an even nicer flavor. So, and then my husband was kind enough, he chopped up the country ham for me. Now, the country ham, I rinsed it, and or he rinsed it, and then we chopped it up. Country ham is so good baked. Um, I grew up when it was fried, and it was always kind of tough, and I started, somehow I figured out baking it. I just wrap it in foil and bake it, and it is so tender and wonderful. So we rinsed it, and this is gonna be similar to baking it in tin foil, because it's gonna be covered in the eggs. So what I have is just some country ham, and I'll use that ham for other things. But I mean country ham and the broccoli. And let me give it a bit of a stir because I do want that mixed up. And I could add to this, and probably would, add some dry mustard to the egg um, or sprinkle it over. And I didn't get the dry mustard out, so I'm not gonna worry about it this time. I'm gonna add a little more country ham. And do what the ratios you like and do the flavors that you like. Um, the country ham is something mild, something that my family will eat, my kids especially. Not my husband's favorite uh, to do the broccoli with this, but it's one of our favorites. So he puts up with it. And this is cheddar cheese. Again, this is Cabot cheddar that I'm working with. And cheddar makes it better, so I'm loading this thing up. <laughs> and we may get a fifth flavor, I just had an idea. That's why I love cooking, because it just it's hard to get it wrong if you really think through it. And I'm also one of those people that can generally smell flavors and know if something's gonna work, if it's gonna go together. Um, and that's why I think cooking is fun. It can get creative with it as you go. Okay, so what we have is the onion, the broccoli, the country ham, and cheddar cheese. And I'm just gonna push put this over and again I want to make sure it kind of gets all in there and I don't want to do too much egg you don't want the egg to overpower with this um, it too I think would be good with fresh salsa or served um, it, it's a complete meal in and of itself to be honest and I'm gonna put just a little more egg you want everything covered pretty well okay so there's our other flavor um, let's get this all in the oven and we get that in the oven I'll make the other two or three flavors okay so we've got the first round cooking in the oven we've got the two Mexican one spicy one not uh, with the Mexican chorizo which is a Mexican sausage and then we've got the other one that I made which was the broccoli and country ham this is one that I made ahead of time too, and I wanted to show it to you just so you get a sense of it should be kind of browned on, on top. So this is a, to let you know how to know when it's done. It should be fairly brown on top, and it should be really firm in the center, and you don't want it mushy in the center, and you can see that texture, what it looks like. This, um, the flavors I used for this one, I was kind of excited about. I used some sun-dried tomato. I used uh, a raw cheddar cheese and I use some sausage and some uh, rosemary so it's rosemary sun-dried tomato and I can't wait to try that one and you get the sense too these come out like little muffins if you wanted to you could pop them out like that some people make these kinds of things in a muffin tin uh, for serving sizes but what I found is it makes the muffin tin just hard to um, wash and I prefer to do it in a glass baking dish and then just cut it into the portions because I eat smaller portions generally than my husband. Um, so anyway, that I like using the baking, glass baking dishes, but you can use um, a muffin tin if you prefer. Okay, the next flavor we're gonna do is Philly cheesesteak. You love Philly cheesesteak. And remember, part of my doing this is because we aren't traditional fam, uh, breakfast type eaters. My daughter will actually eat dinner leftovers for breakfast and my husband doesn't like eggs very much. So this is, again, in my cast iron skillet, I browned up some onion and some bell pepper. Not a lot. Onions and bell pepper are really carbier vegetables than we tend to think. So I didn't put a lot. I did get really heavy on the shaved steak, and this is, I think, steak um, There's a Steak Ease brand that Aldi's has that I love, 
and I don't have any of that. And there's also shaved beef that you can get just in your uh, grocery store, and that's really good as well. I just didn't have any of that on hand. And I'm adding right now mozzarella cheese. Now, all of the combinations uh, of flavor are totally up to you. I'm gonna use some mozzarella cheese, and I'm gonna use some cheddar cheese. We like mozzarella for the stringy texture, and we like cheddar for the flavor. Um, I've also, by the way, added some garlic and some onion powder to this. So there's the cheddar that I'm adding. Now, I could add sun-dried tomatoes, I could add bacon, I could add any number of things to this, but I'm gonna keep it fairly mild, and this is a great dish to take um, if you have a get-together, a brunch, or breakfast, or even a dinner. It's something that people generally like and they don't think of it as a breakfast food. So those of you who don't like eggs, I'm telling you this um, may change your mind. Okay, I've got everything kind of mixed together and I'm gonna pour the egg over it and I'm just going to bake it in the skillet. And I love that, I love One Pot Wonders, things where there's not a lot of cleanup in between. Okay, pour this over. And, oops, what I've done is I mix this in my Ninja because you wanna make sure you get the eggs blended really well. You don't have to use a Ninja or a blender, you can do it by hand, but I didn't want it to be um, kind of stringy or eggy. And this is using a lot of egg. And remember, this is a ratio of eight eggs, one third cup cream, salt and pepper. And I probably would put some more pepper over this too. And you just want it covered with egg. You don't want uh, too much ratio. You don't, and if you can see from that, it's just barely covered. You don't want their, um, your ingredients floating in egg, unless you really like egg, and you don't want it um, to be too dry. All right, that looks about right to me, and we'll put that one in the oven. <laughs> Thanks, honey, that's heavy. Okay. One of the last I'm going to make, oh, I'm gonna make two. Um, this first one I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use sausage and I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use about half of this amount of sausage and I have more sausage to brown, I just haven't done it yet. Um, but I want a good covering of sausage and then I'm gonna use spinach. Now I've used zucchini and you wanna chop it up um, and cook it a little bit. But I have <laughs> the dog smells the, um, not the spinach she's after, the dog smells the sausage. Sorry Winnie, not me. Um, Winston is our English Springer Spaniel and you probably have seen him um, on the sofa and behind me and usually he's at my feet. Um, I'm going to pull the stems off this and just move it around and get it well mixed. Now, when I think about spinach, I think about sun-dried tomato and I probably would put that in there. Um, I'm making this, we have uh, guests, and so I'm making this hopefully uh, less objectionable by not adding things that, that other people may not like. But I would add sun-dried tomato, I could add, um, artichokes, there's any number of things that kind of go with spinach. Think about what you like when you eat spinach on your own, and you can add those things. The egg is really just the binder in this. So there's just literally thousands of combinations that we could do. Okay, I'm going to add the cream cheese to this. <clears throat> it adds a little more fat and gives it great texture. <clears throat> so I've got cream cheese, again, I, um, this is just sausage, and this is a combination of hot and mild sausage. When you're buying your sausage, look for brands that don't have a lot of fillers. Uh, for some reason, companies like to put <clears throat> um, wheat as a filler, and they also like to put sugar in sausage. And so you wanna buy the lowest carb sausage as possible, or make your own. You can buy ground pork and use your own seasoning, uh, and that's really pretty good too. Okay. Not gonna put a lot of that, and that's pretty much done. Now, for cheeses in this, I'm going to do 
um, some cheddar cheese. This is a bigger crumble than what you've seen me use. And it's just bigger pieces. The dog is hoping I'll drop some cheese. He is right up under my feet. Okay, actually he's going to the corner now. Okay. Well, why not just add the rest of it, right? Okay. Now, same thing as in the past. We'll just pour this over. And I want to get it just barely covered. And I'm probably going to have to mix up some more um, egg before I can do the last. Now, the spinach is going to cook down considerably, so it doesn't have to be as well covered as some of the others, but that's not quite good enough. So let me pause one more time, and we've got to do our final um, casserole. Okay, let's make the final flavor. I call this the kitchen sink um, casserole. And I usually do something like this when I just am getting rid of leftovers and I get creative. This was the sausage I had left. This is the country ham. I'm gonna call it meat lovers to my husband because that would appeal more to him than kitchen sink leftovers. <laughs> so I've got country ham, I've got sausage. I'm gonna add some bacon. And this is just real bacon that's crumbled up. I, we buy those from Sam's Club and I keep them on hand. They're great to add fat and flavor to vegetables whether you're sauteing them or, what, or just putting it on at the table. And also you can make really quick egg and cheese and bacon scramble. So these are always on hand at our house. They're not just for salads. Um, so I've got bacon, country ham, a mixture of hot and mild sausage. And then I'm just gonna throw in the cheese we have. Now I'm gonna keep it manly and not put any vegetables in this one. I'm going to do cheddar cheese with it and I'm gonna do some mozzarella. That's what this is. And I could do other flavors too. I've got some Parmesan cheese. I could use that and get rid of it. And again, use whatever flavors your family likes. Um, Canadian bacon is really nice with it. Um, like I said, I like to use sun-dried tomato because it's not a lot of carbs for a lot of flavor. Um, the cheese really makes it good. Smoked Gouda is really good with eggs. You could use, um, gosh, any number of things. You guys probably think of ideas I don't. Okay, so I've got this mixed. You also, I've put a lot of cheese in this, so I'm not, I'm gonna put just a little bit of cream cheese, not much. Um, but this is really gonna be good fat and protein because you've got the ham and the sausage. And think about that as well. If you're using ham that's fairly lean, like in America we call it Canadian bacon, or in the US, um, if you're using a ham that's kind of lean, you wanna make sure you add fat with cream cheese or cream, uh, of course I put cream in the eggs. And go for as much punch of flavor as you can without adding carbs. Notice there's not gonna be any um, onion in this. I have a brother who doesn't think he likes onion, so I use onion powder when I cook for him, and he generally thinks I'm a good cook, so don't tell him. <laughs> uh, but onion powder is a good way, if you have someone who doesn't like onion, you can still get that wonderful sweet flavor without having any visible bits in there. Okay, now all I'm gonna do is pour the last of the egg over this. Uh, I'm not gonna add the parm, uh, but I could. My hands are messy. <laughs> Actually, let's do a little. What the heck? It'll be good. Then I'll pour the eggs over, and then I think a few of those may be out of the oven, and we'll take a quick peek and see what we have. Okay. Yep. That's all over that. Pour it over. I hope that as you're watching this, you're thinking about the different flavors that you can make at your house. And I'm glad you can't see all of my kitchen because it is a complete disaster. And what I love about this is if you don't have enough egg, you simply mix more egg up. 
And again, you want to mix it really, really well. Look at that. It was perfect. That doesn't ever happen. Um, so this one is, again, I'm going to make sure I get the egg all through there just so that it mixes good. I think this is going to be really one of the best flavors. It's always that thing that I kind of make up as I go along that we like, and then everybody loves it, and they say, wow, can you make this again? And I can't because I made it up as I went along. <laughs> okay. We'll put that in the oven, and let's see what we have. This was our broccoli and ham with cheddar, and it looks fantastic. Now, before I put this on the table, I'll take some more of my cheddar. This is mozzarella. Um, it looks so similar, but I can tell by texture. I'll take some more and just sprinkle it over. And man, this smells so incredible. I so wish you could smell it. Okay, and look how pretty that is in the cast iron skillet. It just looks, I think, homey uh, in that versus the, the glass baking dish. These are the uh, two with chorizo, the two Mexican. This is the one that's milder, and I can see the little bits of cream cheese in it. And this is the one that has the jalapeno. So this will be my husband's, the spicier one. And again, once this cools, it'll be really firm. I'll cut it into squares, and this would probably be about four servings for him. Um, this one, probably the kids and I could get, well, my son would eat it, but my daughter and I could probably get two breakfasts out of that. Um, you can serve it with other meats if you want, but really it's plenty. Again, in this, I would probably use avocado, fresh salsa, fresh cilantro, sour cream, and really make it, it could be a dinner even, it wouldn't have to be a breakfast. So that's all we have ready, and I hope that you enjoy it.